what is going on guys it's the mad dragon we're on to week four of the autumn internationals it's technically round three of the autumn nations even though the first week was also done by amazon it's just not classed as part of it so week three or four but it's week four of the autumn internationals which means of course we need to do a preview video for this weekend's rugby coming up so as we do in these preview videos we will of course be checking out the official teams that have been announced to play in the games have a look at the teams go through them who some good picks some bad picks maybe some choices looking at some tactics we think the teams might bring and then finally we'll give a score prediction now the first video of today just because they're the first teams i've seen announced italy versus the springboks now throughout the series so far um i've really only been focusing on the games i'm able to watch because they play some games at the same time it just so happens that italy always seem to be the team that's on at the exact same time so i haven't really covered italy so far but with their win over australia last week i thought this would be a lot of fun to uh, cover their game this week as well so let's start let's start off talking about the spring box first well, because last week south africa of course went on to play france in france they got a really early red card into that game i thought it was all over i thought it was going to be a real rubbish game compared to what we were all really excited for in the hype for that one uh but south africa held it out extremely well kept that game in contention with 14 men all the way up until we saw dupont getting his red card it drew it level and then france managed to barrel over right towards the end of that game and seal out a victory now south africa might feel a little bit disheartened by that one i thought they actually played extremely well considering what they were up against in that game but going into this week Italy are no pushovers, so they'll want to make sure they definitely come out on top form. And the team sort of reflects that, what we've got already here. So the starting front row is the same front row we saw um, in the game against France, and they performed pretty well for the majority of it. Um, I certainly think a couple of people came on in that second half um, and either made it better or made it worse in different areas. But I think as a starting front row, I thought they were managing to hold out relatively well. I actually thought they were doing pretty well in terms of like the malls and the scrummaging throughout the game. Um, and seeing a couple of names there like Ox and Che and Franz Malherbe, we do see them a lot as this starting front row so i think that's a good move for them two changes in the lock department though marat and ori come in on the four five angle now last week of course we did have etzebeth and mostert but mostert is going to move uh, into the flanker position now to cover where steph dutoit's got his red card obviously he's going to be out for a couple of games um etzebeth moved to the bench um, I, we do see it a little bit where tier one teams play Italy, which uh, it still struggles to sort of gauge. I would still class Italy as a tier one team. Um, they're just not necessarily the team you have in like the top 10 in the world rankings. Um, and we do see it a lot where teams tend to put on like not quite a B team, but maybe not the starting A team against Italy. The majority of this South Africa team actually is. So I'm, I'm quite glad by that. But two switches here in the line out department, neither of which players playing particularly badly. So I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. But the Italian line out... It's, it's nothing to be messed about with, so we'll have to see how they get on there. In the back row, then, Khaleesi retains his captaincy. He came off a little bit earlier than I expected him to last week. Jasper Visa remains an number eight, and like I've already said, Mostert comes in in that flank position. So pretty much the same front eight we saw against France. So South Africa not messing about with it too much. They know the threat Italy going to be offering with that win over Australia last week. So really excited to see how these boys get on. In the halfback partnership, we have Faf de Klerk and Damien Valemsa retaining theirs. Faf de Klerk last week, I thought was having a really good game. I was a little bit down last week on that uh, Faf de Klerk got named ahead of Hendrixa, but the experience certainly sort of weighed in last week on the game. I thought there was good game management from him, so I'm glad to see him still retain there. Uh, Damien Valemsa still not getting those kicking duties uh, at number 10, even though he's doing okay in terms of the fly half, but Cheslin Colby's kicking last week much better. In the centre partnership, a couple of switches around here. Esther Hazen comes in in the inside centre and Dialende moves to outside centre. I don't know if I've ever seen Damien Dialende play outside centre, but I'm sure we'll have a, an interesting tactic there to see how he gets on. He's, in terms of centres, he's certainly one of the more sort of hard running line sort of players, as opposed to typically when you have like a 13, maybe you want someone who's going to find the gaps around the outside, maybe a little bit of an extra distributor. I haven't actually seen that many games from Esther Hazen, so we'll see how he gets on. And then finally in the back three, the same as we got to see last week in Arenza, Colby and and LaRue. Um, again, trying to avoid sort of danger angles. These boys love jumping in the air. They ain't afraid to die uh, <laughs> but under the high balls, but the high ball was a tactic we got to see a lot last week, and I think South Africa were doing pretty well, to be fair. France aerial battle was, was contestable quite a lot throughout the game from certain areas, but of course we saw that hit from um, Dupont that ended up with him getting his red card, just not timing those jumps correctly. Sometimes those high balls, if you play them correct, can get you massive game meters. So I'm sure we might be seeing a similar tactic going in this week. In terms of the replacements then, Malcolm March, Stephen Kitschoff and Vincent Koch, alongside of Evan Etzebeth, Quagga Smith and Evan Roos. Now, 
That's a big bench. That's a big set of forwards to come on there. Going for the 6-2, um, I would imagine, like you might see against some other teams, sort of like Italy, South Africa will want to try and dominate that forward game, won't they? I think the scrummaging, the mauling game, I'm not sure we're going to see these backs launch a great deal. You might be seeing four, five attempts in the first half alone, trying to get that driving maul over. Um, having these boys go on in the second half, Quagga Smith is doing really well coming off from the bench. Um, Evan Roos is someone we haven't got to see a great deal in international, or I haven't anyway. So I'm looking forward to see a bit more from him. And then in the 22 shirt, Reinach comes in alongside of Libok. Uh, or Liebock. Uh, I can't remember what his, the pronunciation was. Apologies for that. Uh, I, I try and remember from last week. There's too many new names for me to keep track of. Um, but I think South Africa have gone the right way about this. I think the 6-2 split's the right call here. We know what Italy brought last week. We saw how close Australia did get to winning that game, but some of their forwards were what were really giving them big game lines. So putting on more forwards, I think, is the right call. On to Italy then, who uh, I haven't really got to cover on the channel across this Autumn Nations, which is a real shame. I kind of wish I was able to cover last week's game. I have gone back I've seen some highlights from it. I've seen some extended highlights from it. Um, and Italy looked really, really good. I've been quite impressed by them. Defensive side towards the end of the game, they definitely conceded a couple of points. I did switch the game on at sort of half time with whatever game was on at the same time last week. I did see Australia score one of their tries. It looked like just consistent pressure was going to allow Australia to get a few tries. But some of the Italian backs playing so well. So in terms of the team name for this week then, Fischetti, Nicotera and Casarelli in that front row. In the lock department, Canone and Federico Ruzza, who was in my team of the week. A lot of weeks in the Six Nations. I think he's an incredibly good player. Now, we've already looked at the, the South African line out. Maybe some slightly lesser capped players in that lock department for South Africa. I think these boys will have a, a good crack at a couple of those lineups. I look forward to seeing that battle. In the back row there, Negri alongside of Lamaro and Canone coming in on that number eight. Now, Lamaro last week... Again, just, just game management, understanding you're playing Australia, understanding even if you've got the pressure behind you, sometimes just taking the three points is the way to go. And when you win by such a fine margin, they're the correct calls. He's making good movements at the minute, really like Lamara. One to eight, looking pretty good for Italy. In the halfback partnership, Stephen Varney comes in alongside Tommaso Alan, who last week was just scoring points for days. Glad to see his name still there. Did pick up a big knock. Um, in last week's game so glad to see that he's still alive for one uh, but still willing to play the game uh, probably going to be going hard again this week he's fighting that that position out um, Garbisi's been so renowned now in this Italian team you've got to show up if you get picked for the team and Tommaso Alan's playing extremely well in the centre partnership Morisi alongside of Brex who will be bringing some uh, some hard running lines but Brex as well in terms of the defence we, we've mentioned it in the Six Nations before the boy is up for it he's, uh, he's quite a hard def tackler and hard defender um, again there's a there's a mix up there in the South African centre partnership you know they've moved DLN 8 to 13 going up against Brex you know, there, there could be some mismatches there. I think it's a look for a couple of these different positions. Um, and then in the back three, Yuani, Bruno, and Capuzzo, whose three names I'm sure we all know pretty well by now. Um, I still like that it gets referred to as, as a Wales supporter over here, that when we think of Capuzzo, people think, oh, the Capuzzo try that they got against Wales, even though it was absolutely Padovani's try. <laughs> what people remember is the entire build up to it and not the pass. But I still like that people refer to it as that. But I think Capuzzo is an awesome player. He's come on to this international scene, still such a young lad, but making such a massive impact. We saw him scoring tries last week. Uh, Monte Iwani has been killing it in the games that were going on the alternations because I have been keeping up a little bit with it as well. So really nice to see there. That is a good one to 15. I'm sure Italy will be looking to keep, keep this uh, momentum going forwards after the Wallabies game. And then on the bench then we have Lucchesi, Neymar and Ferrari in that replacement forwards. Of course, boys we speak about in the Six Nations. They're not going sort of half teams. They, they're, they're going for it. They want to believe in it. I'd really like to see this in the rest of the replacement forwards then we have David C.C. and Zulani alongside of the replacement backs in Garbisi not that one different Garbisi Alessandro Garbisi is the replacement scrum half Padovani and Menoncello. Hopefully I'm getting that pronunciation right. I really struggle to uh, to get his name out correctly but Padovani Padovani last week doing sort of okay. I saw a couple of highlights from him. Sort of missed kick from him that not the best. Um, Padovani has been good at kicking in the past so I'm not really sure what that was about but um, I think this is a good bench. I would probably say the South African bench is probably uh, maybe more, I don't know about more experienced, but just heavier. I just think of it as a bigger set of um, of replacements there. So maybe in the later stages of this game is where you might really see South Africa come alive. But overall, I think this is a really good Italian team. I'm really looking forward to see how they get on. So what do we think in terms of a score prediction then? Well, 
South Africa last week, uh, I thought really improved their game management considering they lost that man advantage. I would hope going into this game, they give Italy the respect to that they are a team that can beat a Wallabies team and not like a bad Wallabies team, a, a pretty starting Wallabies team as well. So I would take from that that Italy are going to be a threat. They're going to be playing at home. They're going to be taking the three points when they're on offer. I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a few three points exchanged in that first half. Um, and then towards the end of the game is maybe where you'll see those South African forwards with that 6-2 split on the bench. You might be able to see them go. But we've already seen those Italian backs. If you just give them a bit of room, they're going to run 50 metres and score a try. So um, I think I'm going to back South Africa for this one for my prediction. Um, I just think those forwards will be able to seal it out. Even if Italy is scoring points, I've got a feeling those driving malls could be uh, a potentially bit of a killer in that second half. So I'm going to say South Africa to win. Um, and I'm going to say I'm going to say South Africa to win by ten. I think is going to be my prediction. But of course, guys, make sure you do drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the game and make sure you are getting your predictions onto the Super Brew for the final week. I really need to improve. My Super Brew's been doing terribly recently. I've been doing some really bad picks. But I hope you all enjoyed this one today, guys. Of course, we will be doing loads of different preview videos over the next day and a bit whenever the teams get announced. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. To keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I will see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.